Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the November 9th edition of Carolina Week. Out-of-state students are facing yet another tuition increase, and it could be a big one. I'm Chris Neal. What's the biggest pain about homecoming? Trying to find a place to park anywhere near campus. In sports, the wheels on the football bandwagon are starting to pick up momentum, and the defending national champions take the floor tonight for real. Weathercaster Dan McKimmy will tell us if we can expect this weekend's sunny skies to stick around. All that and a Carolina homecoming tradition brought back after 16 years. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Out-of-state students could be hit with a tuition increase of $1,400 this year. Good evening, I'm Lauren Magaha. And I'm Bethany Tuggle. That has a number of out-of-staters planning a march at South Building to show how unhappy they are. That rally is scheduled for Wednesday at noon. Andrea Blanford joins us now live in the studio. Andrea, do the out-of-staters think they're bearing too much of the burden? Absolutely, Bethany. They think they're becoming the university's cash cow, and they don't get much financial aid in return compared to in-staters. But interim provost Bruce Carney says everyone will benefit from this increase. Along with financial aid, the revenue will go to course offerings and faculty retention, academic support and student services, and graduate awards and remissions. But that's little comfort to out-of-state senior Rebecca Veith, who didn't want her parents to have to pay private school rates. And by the time I leave, uh, my tuition is going to have gone up to almost as close as it was at that private school. Some students say a tuition hike would drive them away from the university, while others will just roll with the punches. I probably just have to take a bigger loan. Um, um, ask for one and then, you know, in time pay that back. Carney says regardless of the tuition increase, students who discriminate between cost and value will still see UNC as a lot of bang for the buck. But Carney knows some students are upset because of all the angry emails he's gotten in the past few days. Now, Andrea, what's the university going to do about this situation? Well, the increase is just a proposal, and administrators are planning a town hall meeting for next Monday in the Student Union to listen to students' concerns and answer any of their questions. Andrea Blamford, live in the studio. Thanks. A program called C Connect Carolina will soon transform administration here at UNC. There was a meeting this afternoon to discuss plans to revamp the system. Connect Carolina's goals include centralizing UNC's administration systems to increase effectiveness and interaction among students, faculty, and staff. The project will take more than a year to restructure the different branches of the UNC administration, and that includes academic advising, registration, and scheduling. Connect Carolina also hopes to revamp UNC admissions. Prospective students will apply online to UNC, and their information will be more secure. Connect Carolina will also affect human resources, payroll, and financial data. UNC is planning some big changes for both student and faculty housing during the next three years. Student housing at Odom Village and Granville Towers will undergo major renovations by 2012, while University Square and Carolina North could be sites of new faculty housing. Right now, officials don't know if they'll tear down the existing buildings or just renovate them extensively. Homecoming brings thousands of people back to Chapel Hill, adding to the problem of limited parking on and near campus. Chris Neal joins us from the newsroom. Chris, parking is an ongoing concern at UNC. It is, Lauren, especially on game days. You see a lot of these reserve signs. This weekend's high volume traffic made it nearly impossible to find a parking spot. That's something that's becoming increasingly difficult, homecoming weekend or not. UNC has a lot of benefits to offer its students. Unfortunately, on-campus parking isn't one of them. So, approximately how many parking spaces are available to students on campus? Uh, right now we're looking at roughly uh, 3,900 uh, spaces that are allotted to the different classes of students. Of course, freshmen are ineligible, but that's uh, sophomores, juniors, seniors, transfers, and, and, and uh, post-grad. Considering UNC has an enrollment of more than 25,000 students, that's not a lot to go around. Most on-campus parking spaces go to faculty and staff, leaving most students with no place to park. 
and that sometimes leads to parking tickets. It is uh, the job of a parking control officer to make sure that you, for example, if you have paid for a parking permit here on campus, uh, that you have that space available to you. I'm paying out-of-state tuition. I should be able to get a parking spot. And even if somebody comes to visit you at a dorm, there's no parking for them. Like, there's no parking at any dorms. It's ridiculous. Students have to register online for a parking spot before the semester begins. Most students living on campus receive parking at the PR lot on SD's Drive, forcing them to catch a bus to and from campus to get to their cars. Not a very popular option. It would be really nice for them to add some type of other parking garage that's close to this campus for students to park at. Game days result in fewer spaces for students. The Department of Public Safety realizes this, but says it's a necessary evil. We're very mindful of, of the impact that game days, like our Thursday football game recently, uh, the impact that that has on campus. We understand that that is an inconvenience at times, but uh, it's in the best interest of the, uh, the university. But uh, there are alternatives available. Some of the alternatives DPS spokesperson Randy Young mentioned included the mass transit systems and parking lots off campus for commuters. Chris, are there any plans in the works to increase student parking on campus? There are a few plans in the campus development project, which include the parking deck that's being constructed over near the Stone Center, but it's unclear how many of those spaces will actually go to students. All right, Chris Neal reporting from the newsroom this evening. Thanks, Chris. She's one of Chapel Hill's most widely known residents. And her fame continues to spread well beyond the town's borders. But she doesn't mind giving some of her secrets to up-and-coming chefs. That story next. Hey, good game. Oh, there we go. Great game, man. and eventually everyone will see you for what you really are. A fake, a fraud, an asterisk. Don't be an asterisk. Mother taught me. Averaging 18%. Balance the budget. Increasing clouds for... today so we don't miss out on the next big idea tomorrow. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's getting cold outside as the winter season approaches. Lisa Sines reports about how one local restaurant owner is making sure she keeps her customers warm in more ways than one. Meet Mildred Edna Cotton Council, also known as Mama Dip. She's the owner of Chapel Hill's own slice of Southern Comfort, Mama Dip's restaurant. She opened this restaurant back in 1976, and it wasn't easy. I took $64 in that, and uh, at about 9, 8, 30, 9 at night, I had, uh, we had $135. Well, that, was a good, that was a good day. She no longer struggles to make ends meet, with people packing this room ready to eat some good southern food. Mama Dips is even featured in Southern Living's November issue for being one of the South's best diners. It's just a place that we've always come to for good home cooking. But Mama Dip doesn't feel like a celebrity. And I told him I didn't have a yacht. When I get me a yacht, then I could claim that fame. <laughs> <laughs> she might not want to claim it, but fame has come her way because of her culinary style, which she calls dump cooking. In the country, we didn't have measuring, uh, measuring uh, 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 utensils, cups and things. You make a cake, you just use a coffee cup. I had a lesson in Mama Dip's style of cooking and made my own hush puppies, and they met Mama Dip's approval. But there's more to Mama Dip than her love for food. She not only makes sure her customers are happy and well-fed, but that she also meets the needs of her community as well. 
So Mama Dip is taking part in Dine Out, an event on Wednesday. 10% of her proceeds will go to the Interfaith Council for Social Service. With a wall of awards and accomplishments, Mama Dip has no plans to slow down. In Chapel Hill, I'm Lisa Sines, Carolina Week. If you want to try Mama Dip's recipes at home, she also has a cookbook titled Mama Dip's Kitchen. Dance Marathon isn't until February, but recruitment is already underway for students wanting to get involved. UNC's largest student fundraiser began recruiting dancers in the pit today. Committee members lined the center of campus, encouraging people to sign up to dance for 24 hours straight in February. All money raised from the marathon goes to the North Carolina Children's Hospital. Organizers set up games and showed off their best dance moves to draw students in. They'll be in the pit all week with computers on hand to get people registered. UNC's cheerleading and dance teams aren't the only collegiate teams competing for trophies. Some of the country's best Bangra dance teams took center stage Saturday night to compete for a cause. Hundreds packed Memorial Hall for this year's Ajka Demakra, the Southeast's premier intercollegiate dance competition. UNC's Sangam, a South Asian awareness organization, hosted the event to raise money for the Mahatma Gandhi Fellowship. Dance teams from different parts of the country performed traditional dances as the crowds cheered them on. The fellowship awards took to UNC students up to $3,000 to implement a service project that benefits South Asia. Teeing off for fun and a good cause was the order of the day at the Preserve Golf Course in Durham Friday. Fun was the name of the game at Friday's friendly competition. The Dance Marathon Committee held its fourth annual golf tournament benefiting the North Carolina Children's Hospital. Students from Dance Marathon joined more than 40 local residents and family members. Players hit the course in teams of four, enjoying the game and beautiful weather while helping the kids at the same time. One faculty member's battle with breast cancer has sorority members teaming up to raise money for the cure. This past Sunday, they battled each other in a powder puff tournament. Teams huddled together at Hooker Fields to raise money for breast cancer research. Pi Beta Chai Christen Christian Sorority hosted the event after their faculty advisor, Dem Murray, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Campus a cappella groups performed as the teams played on, on celebrating victories and moving ahead in the rounds all in a crusade to cure breast cancer. The Powder Puff playoffs raised more than $1,000 for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Well, Lauren, it's been pretty nice outside, and now we have uh, Dan McKimmy is here. Yes, he is to give us the weather. It's been, Dan, it was really warm today, considering the fact that it's already November. Yeah, guys, you're right. It was very warm outside and very nice to be outside, but we're expecting some pretty big changes ahead. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know your forecast details and just how much longer this nice weather will last. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours? One in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice? One in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Yeah, I'll do it. Me too. Sign me Take up. on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Everyone has friends. There's online friends friends to go out with on a Saturday night, friends to hang out with and do nothing, friends who show up on moving day, and then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm student forecaster Dan McKimmy with your weather plans for the week ahead. 
Well, it's been very sunny and nice outside today, and if you happen to be outside, you've noticed the sunshine was out earlier in the day. We've seen the clouds begin to increase. We're going to see some wet weather returning across the area as well. In fact, uh, we have a couple of systems going to be affecting our area that will bring us some wet weather. And I don't know if you haven't heard yet, but hurricane season isn't quite over yet. In fact, Tropical Storm Ida is just sitting in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to be moving towards us over the next couple of days. Let's take a look at the satellite, and we'll see that across the area, we see a lot of clouds across North Carolina. There's a lot more thicker clouds off towards the southwest in places like Georgia and Alabama, and that's in association with Tropical Storm Ida. Now, if we take a look at the surface map, we'll see that Tropical Storm Ida is currently in the Gulf of Mexico, and all this green is the rain associated with it. Now, there's going to be two weather systems that are going to play some big impacts on our weather in the next couple of days. The first one is going to be Ida. As it moves towards us, we're going to see this rain begin to increase and move towards North Carolina. This is about Tuesday morning now. The rain is just going to be on the uh, footsteps of the Carolinas. And then the second weather maker we're going to be talking about is this cold front off to our north. That's actually going to push out all that rain, but in the meantime, we're going to see the rain increase through the area on Tuesday and into Tuesday night. In fact, Tuesday morning may be relatively dry if you're heading out, but then Tuesday night into Wednesday morning is when we can really see a lot of rain. And we're talking about one to two inches of rain at the very least. In fact, we take a look at the precipitation totals. We're talking about one to two inches of rain given in a Chapel Hill area, give or take a few tenths. And then off towards the west, we're talking about three, four, possibly even five inches of rain towards some of the mountain counties. Now, if the track of the storm shifts even just a little bit, we could see the rain move towards us, and we could be talking about three to four inches of rain. But currently, right now, we're just talking about a couple of inches of rain at most. Now, if you uh, looked at the current tropical storm, Ida, right now it's currently in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's going to slowly move its way off towards the north. And by about Tuesday morning, it's going to be making landfall in Alabama. Now, earlier this morning, Ida was a hurricane, and it's been downgraded to a tropical storm. The winds are currently 70 miles per hour, and we're going to see this begin to weaken as it approaches the coast. Now, if we take a look at the current um, conditions tonight, we're talking about mostly cloudy skies and cool conditions. Lower 50s for the Triangle, mid 50s for the Sand Hills. Tomorrow afternoon, we're talking about rain later in the afternoon. So if you have any morning classes or early afternoon classes, I think you'll be okay. But then by about the late afternoon, you probably want to have that umbrella with you. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 60s towards inland, about upper 60s towards the coast. Your five-day forecast shows you that on Tuesday, we're talking about 60% chance of rain, and about the same on Wednesday. Again, I think the best chance of rain will be Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then the rest of the week, we're going to break out into sunshine. Temperatures will also gradually rebound as well, and we'll see sunny skies by your weekend. So if you have any weekend plans, it's looking good, but if you guys are doing anything Tuesday or Wednesday, it could be a little wet. All right, thanks, Dan. No problem. Thanks so much. There's a new king and, new, and a new queen on campus following the homecoming game on Saturday. Desmond Rowe and Carly Brantmeyer won this year's vote after a week of campaigning. Rowe is a chemistry major from Goldsboro and Brantmeyer is a photojournalism major from Charlotte. In addition to being king and queen for the next year, the two will get funding to carry out service projects they designed. Rowe's program will include various recreational activities for families of hospital patients. Brantmeyer's project will provide weekly photography classes to underprivileged children and their families. Just because you're an, you're an alumnus doesn't mean you can't eat hot dogs and burgers on game day. Along with other homecoming festivities, UNC alumni tailgated before the highly anticipated Duke Carolina game. There was plenty of food to choose from. The first 300 students received free barbecue sandwiches and drinks provided by the university. Some opted to climb the bell tower, while others enjoyed a game of cornhole or got candid with Ramsey's for his 85th birthday. Alumni sported the colors of their alma mater all in front of one of the staples of tradition here at UNC. And now sportscaster Nick King joins us. Nick, I gotta say, it's always a great weekend when you beat Duke. That's right, and hopefully we'll have a sure win tonight. Yeah guys, beating Duke seems to be in every sport this year, and basketball's kicking off tonight. <laughs> Good things. And after the break, we'll squash the misconceptions about a club sport new to UNC. So, April, Yeah. you know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Much too much. Those boys are much too much. 
We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest beat moments beat can have the biggest beat impact beat on a beat child's beat life. Beat a little bit rowdy, R-O-W, woo, D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. All those boys are much too much. Those boys... Explore new worlds. Read. Visit literacy.gov. Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. The football team's confidence is the highest it's been this year, and there's no time for a letdown. After hosting the Blue Devils on Saturday, the Heels are hoping to ride their momentum when they take on number 16 Miami this week. Big Ryan Houston will need to continue being a running machine. Against the Blue Devils, Houston carried the ball 37 times for 164 yards. With the tailback Sean Drone out for the rest of the season, look for Greg Little and Anthony Elzey to pick up the slack on the ground. There's Elzey number six. Duke quarterback Thaddeus Lewis has many similarities to Miami's Ja'Cory Harris. Defense will need to put pressure on him and force quick throws as they did against Duke. Having beaten Miami the past two years, Dante Williams understands how big a win this one would be. I just try to stay focused on one game at a time, and, and the next game is Miami, and that's going to be a great test, so we got to go, and um, I'll be watching a lot of film with them tomorrow. It will take that type of focus from the entire defense on Saturday for the Heels to pull out another win. And now, the moment everyone's been waiting for. The defending national champs take the stage for the first time tonight in a game that will count on their record. The new-look Tar Heel basketball team hosts Florida International tonight. Team will look for more scoring from this guy, Dion Thompson. Oh my goodness. And one more time from Larry Drew. Oh wow. The block machine that is Ed Davis will be joined by freshman John Henson to pretty much swat anything that FIU will bring to the lane. You will never get this. One more time. And if the heels get outside shooting from seven footer Tyler Zeller, Chia, and the freshman Ware twins, that one's David, I think. Well, forget about it how you do it. The game tips off tonight at 7 in the Dean Dome. The women's soccer team wasn't the favorite heading into this year's ACC tour tournament, but that's why they play the games. The women are champs again. This marks their 20th tournament crown in the past 22 years. That's an unbelievable amount of success during that time period, and senior Casey Nagara was named the MVP after netting two goals in the championship. Men's and women's basketball aren't the only winter sports gearing up for the upcoming season. Reporter Alicia Moore tells us how the club's squash team has high hopes for their season this year. Club squash captain and Connecticut native Mike Morrow says since the South isn't known for its love of squash, he often gets interesting questions when he tells people he plays the sport. Almost every single person I have asked down here, when I tell them, oh yeah, I play squash, they say, oh yeah, what's the difference between that and racquetball? Like racquetball, squash is played with a racket and a ball in a four-walled room. In squash, after one player hits the ball against one of the walls, the second player can only let the ball bounce once before they have to hit it. This sequence continues until one of the players is unable to hit the ball or lets it bounce twice. Unlike racquetball, players are not allowed to hit the ball on the ceiling or below a certain line. Another one of the fundamental differences between squash and racquetball is the racket sizes. The racket for squash is much smaller than the racket for racquetball. Also, the ball sizes are very different. The ball for squash is much smaller than the ball for racquetball. Morrow says one of the major pitfalls about UNC squash courts is that they are American-style courts instead of the international courts. Anyone who's anyone in the squash world plays on the international courts. Because of the court restrictions, the nine members of the team who travel are forced to drive or fly at least four hours to play teams that are usually north of D.C. Morrow says the sacrifice of driving is worth it because it has helped the team improve tremendously over the years. Four of our top nine are guys who, who didn't play in high school, you know, kind of homegrown talent, guys who came uh, to the team never having played before. The team accepts players of all skill levels, but that hasn't slowed the team down. 
In Chapel Hill, I'm Alistia Moore, Carolina Week Sports. The team starts the season ranked 46th. And the field hockey team has had an unbelievable year. And one name we've said again and again is Kelsey Kolodzicek. Kolodzicek is the ACC Freshman of the Year. That's her right there scoring number 14. She started every game and scored 13 goals. She was also the only freshman to earn all ACC honors. The volleyball team likes the state of Virginia. The players like going up against these Virginia teams in Chapel Hill even better. Friday night against UVA, big crowd on hand to watch the match. This is going to be Emily McGee with the kill, and kills were the theme of this match. The Heels had 53. There's Heather Brooks, there's Ingrid hansen Tutlin, and Emily McGee one more time. All UNC, they win three sets to one. Sunday was senior night. Heels looking to avenge a loss earlier this year against Tech. Emily McGee having a field day again. She was so money she didn't even know. The team rallied from a 2-1 deficit, winning 3-1 in front of the home crowd on senior night. So guys, tonight, go Heels in the basketball game. That's right, we'll <laughs> cheer them on. Thanks so much, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Homegrown celebrations are becoming more common at UNC. That's right, coming up, we'll take you to the celebration that's making a comeback after 16 years. If you have a story idea, contact Carolina Week at 843-8292. You can also visit us online at carolinaweek.org. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599. My name is Emily. I'm in seven years. I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Emily. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Honey? The credit fairy doesn't exist. What? It's make-believe. Nobody left anything under your pillow. If there's no credit fairy, then we'll make our credit score go up. We will, by doing things like paying our bills on time. There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. What? Many students are still flying high after the football victory against the Blue Devils. And a lot of them woke up early that morning to show their Carolina pride at the first homecoming parade in 16 years. Carolina Week reporter Mia Moore was there. After almost two decades, a long forgotten tradition returns. Led by student body president Jasmine Jones, the marching band kicked off Saturday's homecoming parade. Chapel Hill police say about 3,000 people showed up to cheer on the Tar Heels. And many of those shouting and cheering on the participants were residents in the community, like Buddy Kelly, who is excited to be back in a familiar setting. I'm a townie, so I've seen a couple Duke, beat Duke Parade before, so I'm glad it's back. The support of locals was a huge accomplishment for student body president Jasmine Jones, who organized the revitalization of the event. The students did a really great job with being participants in the parade, and so did the community by not only participating, but coming out to support it. The parade initially was scheduled to last for an hour, but lasted only for about 15 minutes. In planning the event, Jones intended to have more student groups participate, something that might have helped extend the parade. Jones now hopes organizers will rally for more student involvement in the years to come so that a legacy continues. It's going to be expected next year, and so that is my next step to figure out how can we continue this and how can we make this, you know, every year. And organizers look forward to more school spirit in the coming years to cheer on the Tar Heels to more homecoming victories. In Chapel Hill, I'm Mia Moore, Carolina Week. 
All right, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.